welcome back to my channel it's me she loves tea and as you can see by the title uh, today uh, I'm gonna be sharing my journey on my pituitary brain tumor yeah so I'm gonna try not to get emotional I can't promise anything um, but uh, it's been a journey it's still going and if you know someone um, that you know is going through this if you know someone that uh, has gone through it if you're going through it I hope this video uh, finds you and it helps you and it inspires you and it motivates you to stay strong and keep going uh, continue watching um, it's gonna be uh, story time but I finally found the strength and the courage to share my journey because when I first found out I thought I was the only one like going through this and I later found that there are there are other people in the world going through the same thing that I am but I just didn't know like where they were or where to find them and I was told by a very special person that I should share my message and so um, here I am I'm here to share my message um, with the world and share my journey with the world um, and what I've been going through and what I'm still going through um, so Thank you for tuning in, um, and again, I hope this helps you or you can share this with uh, someone that you know that may be going through the same thing or has gone through the same thing. Um, with that being said, I'm just looking around because I don't have any tissue, but if I get emotional, bear with me. Um, and I just want to take you along and let you know how my journey started um, with my pituitary brain tumor. Okay, so without further ado, <laughs> here we go. Um, <clears throat> so first, I guess a little bit about me. I am very active, super healthy, um, no health issues, no broken bones, no anything, right? Um, very active in sports, cheer, dance, all of that stuff, right? So, um, always happy, still am, but always happy, uh, always smiling, always cheering others on. So, you can only imagine um, to find out this news was not the easiest thing you know but they say hey um, God doesn't give you more than you can handle but he always gives the strong ones the toughest battles right so I'm gonna take you back to 2018 when I found out and how I found out I found out I was working at a job where I was sitting at a computer and you know sometimes you're at the computer and you're like oh if you go in you don't have glasses or anything like that and then all of a sudden you're like you know what I think I need eyeglasses so I um, said let me go you know get a prescription and see what's going on and so they said oh you know you have a mild prescription right so got the mild prescription Fast forward into about mm, maybe six months on the job. I um, six months into the job, I started to notice like things are getting a little blurry, like, and I started having like double vision. Um, 
So I was like, okay, something's going on. So I go back to the eye doctor, um, have them check it out. The first optometrist that I went to uh, stayed, they, she ran some tests, she was asking me questions, and then she was like, you know, I can't give you a prescription just yet. I think I wanna have you see an ophthalmologist. I'm like, what? So she said, yeah, she drew like a paper and she said, I see something here. And it was just like a circle. She was like, but my equipment doesn't tell me like what it is or what it could be or what's going on. So I want to see, I want you to see a specialist. So I said, okay. So I went to see a specialist. They ran all these tests, like um, visual field tests, um, see the color tests, like all these tests. They were like, nope, uh, we don't see anything. Mind you, the first uh, specialist or uh, ophthalmologist that I went to was just, I don't think they were qualified. I'll just say that to be nice. I don't think they were qualified for that position. So I went to get a second opinion. The second uh, ophthalmologist that I went to run some extensive tests and, um, and then said, you know, um, I think I want to send you to um, a neurologist. This point, I'm like, neurologist, okay, something must be going on. So they send me to the neurologist. The neurologist does some tests. They also uh, run an MRI. So as some of you may know, you may not know, an MRI is where they, is very, so like they can see like inside through everything. So I had to go get an MRI, my first time ever having to give one, get one, I was terrified. And then they said, with contrast, I'm all with contrast, what does that even mean? So with the contrast is where they have to inject like dye into you. So it like lights up your body. So when you're doing the MRI, they can see everything in there, you know, um, including like your bones and all of that stuff, but they can see the things other than the bones, right? So. I go get the MRI, um, and then after that, they call me and let me know, um, basically, that I have a pituitary tumor. Um, they said that the tumor was, I believe, three centimeters, so... Um, and it's sitting on my pituitary gland and pressing on my optic nerve. So let me break that down for you. The pituitary gland is where all the hormones, your major hormones, that's like the master gland. It sits in, it sits like right behind our nose, right behind our nose at the base of the brain. So somewhere between the ears and then right behind here. It's right in the center. That's where the pituitary sits in the cella tercica, right? This little, like, divot like that. On my science heads out there, you might know what I'm talking about. Um, and so, and then that is below where the optic chiasm is. And I'm not going to get too, like, science-driven into this, um, even though I'm a science major. Um, but just want to kind of give you, paint a picture, if you will. And I might insert some clips that'll help you get a better visual of what I'm trying to describe. So these tumors that grow there can either be the size of a walnut or a golf ball, depending on how long they've been there. So when I go meet, now I'm, I'm meeting with a, neuro, a neurosurgeon. And he's telling me that mine is, I believe three or 3.5 centimeters and it's pressing on my optic nerve. So I'm going, okay, like, what does that mean? You know, he said, well, yours is a pretty large size. We usually, you know, see them, you know, a little smaller, but yours is um, and a large size. It grows, um, it could have been there for years, maybe since you were, you know, like a teenager or something like that. So this is like years, right? And, um, so I said, well, what, um, what are the steps to take, you know, to get it? And, and he said, well, there's different ways to remove the tumor. We can either do a 
uh, a craniotomy, which is we go through uh, through the skull and do that. And immediately when he said that, I started crying. Um, nobody wants their skull like cut open, so. Yeah, I just, I remember my mouth just dropped, like tears just started coming from my eyes because I, I couldn't believe it. Um, first, that I had this tumor. Second, that uh, I may have to get my skull cut open. Um, so, he said, we do have another way that we can do it. It's a more, uh, less invasive way um, and that is uh, by going through your going through your nose um, what they would do is he would work with someone else um, another uh, ENT doctor and they would have a camera going through one nose and then the other like microscopic tool I guess uh, going through the other nose a uh, nostril excuse me only have one nose um and they can go in and then you know get the tumor out that way so i was like well i want to elect for that and they said this would probably be the best way to get it so they'll go in and try and you know get it um so fast forward well first after meeting with him um to see what the options were i needed to know how fast to get the surgery done you're probably thinking like how fast you can get the surgery done yes i needed to know how fast to get the surgery done because what i didn't mention was this is in 2018 around november now earlier that year february on valentine's day I got engaged. I got engaged on Valentine's Day. We planned the wedding for exactly one year later. So that would be 2019, right? Um, on Valentine's Day. So uh, asked the, the surgeon, okay, so how fast can we get this done? Because we've got a wedding coming up. Mind you, this is November 2018. The wedding is scheduled for February 2019. I'd already been planning and all that, and then boom, got this news. So it's okay, little obstacle, right? Roadblock, um, but we will overcome it. And so he said, well, the schedule's kind of booked up, but we'll let you know as soon as we can um, get you in. And we were like, okay, well, it's gotta be soon because you know the wedding's coming up, it's already paid for, the venue's been chosen, like, you know, people have gotten Everything's out. Everything's like pretty much done. So I had to do more appointments after that. I had to go, after seeing the surgeon, I had to see an ENT. Uh, that's an ear, nose, and throat doctor because they have to go in and check your nose pathways to make sure, you know, everything's clean in there and they have, you know, uh, a good path basically to get back to the tumor. I had to go see an endo endocrinologist because it's on the pituitary. They have to check like your hormone levels and some other tests they had to run um, to make sure that my body's strong enough uh, to be able to withstand the surgery. So, and then on top of that, right before the surgery, we had to go do another MRI um, prior to the surgery so they can just kind of get a grasp on it and see like where it's going. So, um, uh, the following week after seeing the, the neurosurgeon, they said, uh, they called me and said, okay, we can schedule you for January 8th. So now we're on January 8th, 2019. Surgery's prepared. We're going in. That's the date. We're sticking to it. Why? The wedding's on February, uh, February 14th, which is like five weeks later, I think. So I asked them, like, what is the recovery process? They said, oh, recovery process is maybe like you're in the hospital for a day, and then after that, you go home, you rest, you know, about four to six weeks, and then, you know, you'll be back at work, you know, no problem. Okay. 
So I've never had surgery before. It's my first, no, my what, my second. I take that back. My second, um, like maybe this is like a major surgery. I mean, like it's brain surgery. So um, I'm freaking out. I kind of didn't know what to do. I didn't really tell anyone. I told some people, but. I don't know if I was ashamed at the time or like, cause you know, I'm so healthy and outgoing. Like, how could this be me? I'm strong, I can get through it. You know, just trying to be tough. Tough for myself and tough for everyone else. And um, yeah, I don't know if not telling anyone or certain people backfired or not, but hey, I don't know. Um, I won't go down that rabbit hole, but the surgery was scheduled and there was a lot that needed to be done. I had to figure out with work, am I going to have time off? Am I going to have money while I'm off? Um, what happens if I don't uh, recover the way they say that I'm going to recover? You know, I'm going in it with a positive mindset, but not really knowing. So, um... Leading up into the surgery, had to prepare everything at home, let my mom know, uh, let my family know, and yeah, and then got ready to go into surgery. So once I went into surgery, um, it was, first of all, let me just say, I trusted the surgeon. Uh, the, this surgery I had was in California. Uh, it was at Kaiser Sunset with Dr. Sharn Weber, wonderful staff, nurses, um, J-Lo, um, Janice is her name, amazing, amazing uh, nurse, um, so, and Dr. Maria, the physician's assistant, so wonderful to me, um, from the prep all the way through the surgery. In the surgery... It went well. I remember being walked through the tunnel, you know, um, the anesthesia people were really wonderful. Like everybody, it was just like, it was perfect, right? And then got, the, I remember going through the tunnel and then coming out and next thing you know, I was hearing like noise, like people trying to wake me up. Wake up, wake up, wake up. Can you hear me? What is your name? You know, doing all of this. And um, I remember opening my eyes 